the show. June is Pride Month, and today, all show long, we are celebrating with our very own Pride Party. I am so excited. And it's feeling so, so full of love in here, and I cannot wait to get started. So obviously, we're gonna start with something delicious. Now, I don't know about you, but the most important meal of the day is brunch. I would call it breakfast on most days of the week, but on Pride it's brunch, obviously. <laughs> so I wanted to start off making a delicious brunch. It's almost like a breakfast poutine, and I'm gonna get into that, but as it's Pride, we gotta make a cocktail first, am I right? <laughs> I think so. So I am going to be making a delicious watermelon froze. Now froze had its thing like a while ago, I'm not gonna lie, but I feel like it's still a hit. It's so tasty and delish. And you gotta start with a whole bottle of rosé that you freeze in the freezer. So you pop that into the freezer overnight. I put it into just a container. You can do this in a like nine inch square baking pan, in any sort of pan. And honestly, I'm not gonna lie, when you pour out a whole bottle of wine, you're like, that's all that's in a bottle of wine? <laughs> That's not much, it's not much at all. But you wanna use a really bold rosé for this. When you freeze anything, it tends to kind of soften the flavor profile. So I like a lighter rosé, I'm not gonna lie, if I'm sipping it outside just as is. But when I'm going for a frosé, I wanna go with big punchy, that bright pink color, tons of flavor. So I've frozen that overnight and I'm gonna grab a fork and just kind of like bust this up. Now if you wanted to, you could just serve this and call it granita. Very fancy, very nice. Now, since wine doesn't have a ton of alcohol in it, it's only about, what's this one at? 14, 14, 15%, something like that. Um, it freezes fully. It's not like uh, vodka or gin or anything like that, which does not fully freeze. So that's perfect, looking great. I'm gonna transfer this on into the uh, jug of my blender. So I've got this right over here. I'm gonna lean it over, because this is a big, heavy thing. This is the workout for the day. And I'm just gonna scoop all of that delicious frozen wine right on into that blender. Woo, she's spilly. Come on. This, it's like the most grown up freezy you've ever made. <laughs> okay, we're working on it. This is, again, a workout. If you wanna do it in a lighter container, feel free, but uh, I like working on my muscles. All right, perfect, pop that in. And then you have that beautiful frozen rosé in there. It's gonna be absolutely delish, but I wanna amp this up a little bit. So into that frozen rosé, I'm gonna add a simple syrup. That's just gonna sweeten things up a little bit. And I've got a simple syrup that I made with just about a quarter cup of white sugar and a quarter cup of water. That's all simple syrup is. You heat it up till it all comes together. But I added a little bit of basil in here, just some fresh basil leaves. Give it a little bit of flavor. You do not have to do this. If you wanted, you could switch it up and do this with mint. That would be delicious as well, but I'm gonna get rid of those basil leaves now because they've done their job. It's almost like a tea bag. They have seeped out all of that delicious basil flavor and those just go into the compost and you are good to go. Now I'm gonna add that beautiful basil scented simple syrup right on into the mix along with about a cup of seedless watermelon. So I've cubed it up here. If you want, I would start with this nice and cold from the fridge just to keep everything absolutely delicious. So pop that right on in. And then for a little bit of brightness and acidity, I've got about two tablespoons of lime juice here. Just freshly squeezed lime juice is perfect. You could also do a little bit of lime zest if you were feeling a bit fancy. So pop that on in. Then that blender lid goes on and that's literally all you need for delicious frozen rosé. So, blitz that up. Do the classic blender shake, there you go. That's looking good the best looking slushy that I ever did see. <laughs> All right, now to serve this, I like to pour it right away, or you could pop this into your fridge or freezer. If you pop it in your freezer, just give it a blitz every about half an hour, but just pour that out. It is creamy, it is thick, it is cold, and it is out of control. Garnish that up with a little bit of fresh basil, maybe a little wedge of some watermelon, and you, my friends, have got your party started. This is my new best friend, I love this thing. Okay, so while I'm having my delicious cocktail, I'm also gonna make that brunch dish. 
So I'm just gonna set this aside and I'm gonna get to work on that kind of sort of breakfast poutine. And breakfast poutine sounds like a total dream to me. So to get started on that, I'm gonna get to work on the meat. So um, it's pride. I feel like it's gonna be a long day, maybe a long night. So we wanna get a good base down. Anytime you're going for a party, you want some good protein, some good starch and all the delicious things. So I've got a few strips of crispy cooked bacon here as well as like eight breakfast sausages, cause I don't know. When I was a kid, the only two foods I ever wanted to eat were pancakes and breakfast sausages. Um, I called them chachiches. So this is a chachich uh, poutine and it's gonna be great. So I'm gonna give those a little chop up. Oh, if I can get them chopped up. Oh, that bacon's a little tricky. Okay, cool. I'm gonna chop up those sausages just until they're nice and perfect. I like kind of big chunks, to be honest, because it's gonna be really, really nice. It's gonna taste absolutely amazing. Once I get all of this chopped up, basically we wanna layer things. Now, typically with a poutine, we use French fries. And if you wanted to, you could totally use freezer French fries here. That would work perfectly. But what I like to do at breakfast time is kind of give this a hash brown vibe. So for that hash brown vibe, we're using potato tots. You know the ones? I love a potato tot. They are so good. They're crispy, they're golden brown. They look so good. You get them in the freezer so you don't have to do anything, which is a delight. So I'm just gonna pop those down right here. And then I'm gonna start building this beautiful poutine situation. So I have got a dish here. Any sort of casserole dish will work perfectly. So I'm gonna add in about half of those delicious, crispy baked tots right into the bottom of that pan. I feel like this dish has Mary Bergen University written all over it. <laughs> Which honestly, she was a good, she was cool. I liked it. Then I'm gonna top it with some of that delicious meat that we've chopped up. Add in that breakfast sausage, those big hunks of bacon. Then obviously we need some cheese curds because it is a poutine and you need to have some delicious squeaky Canadian cheese curds. So I'm gonna pop those on top as well and then just add another layer of all of that deliciousness. So again, more of those wonderful tots right on top. This is a side dish, no one's gonna be complaining, but as a breakfast, are you kidding me? Waking up to this, what a delight. You're gonna be making friends literally all day. All right, then the rest of that sausage and that bacon goes on top. Just pop it right, already this looks so good. All right, and then obviously way more cheese curds. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go big. Yeah, we're going big. I mean, you wanna, oh God. Now I'm gonna pop this into the oven because I do want a little bit of meltiness with those cheese curds. So pop that into the oven and while that does its thing and keeps warm, I am going to show you how to make a really quick, super simple hollandaise. I know that sounds scary and you're like, Mary, why are you telling me to make hollandaise? I just had rosé. What are you doing? <laughs> but it's really, really simple. So I've got a bowl here, and the trick is you wanna use a heat-proof bowl. Something that is glass or metal will work perfectly. And I've just got a pot of simmering water here. So into that bowl, I'm gonna add in three egg yolks that I've separated from the whites. So pop those right on in. As well as a little bit of lemon juice. I've just got some freshly squeezed lemon juice here that I'm just adding on in. And then in addition to that, I love a little bit of cayenne pepper, just for a little bit of heat. I'm gonna season it up with salt after, but that little bit of cayenne pepper just gets into that delicious hollandaise. So now what I'm gonna do is grab a whisk, pop this bowl on top of that boiling or simmering water, and just start whisking. That will start to slowly cook together. Now this is something that you wanna do and not walk away from. So keep on whisking those egg yolks. So they're gonna start thickening, and I'm gonna slowly stream in a little bit of butter, just at a time. This is almost like making the world's most buttery, delicious mayonnaise. I have a cheese curd in my mouth and I've been trying really hard <laughs> to eat it subtly and it's not working. All right, already this is thickening up. Now if you wanted to, if it starts to tighten up a little bit too much, the trick is add in a little splash of ice water or cold water. That will thin it out, it will stop that cooking process and you are gonna be good to go. So we have got little potato tots in this dish. There's a bacon, there's breakfast sausage, there's cheese curds, which we melted, which I know is not traditional, but like, you know, melted cheese, come on, so good. It looks absolutely beautiful, but now we're gonna amp it up into that real bright breakfast territory. So right here I have got some eggs that I poached earlier. If you're not in the mood to poach eggs because you made a hollandaise sauce, guess what? 
Fry them, I don't care. Just <laughs> pop some eggs on there and you're gonna be good to go. You just want that runny, delicious yolk. So I'm just gonna grab these babies and pop them right on top of this beautiful platter of all things delicious. Now, fun fact, poached eggs, you can actually do them in advance and then just heat them up in some nice warm water. Again, you just wanna make sure that yolk is nice, oops, <laughs> and runny. Honestly, that was really good. She didn't even break. That's pretty good. This is a good sign for today. All right, he's gonna um, stay there just as our little mascot for the day. But now I'm gonna get that beautiful hollandaise. So I've got that over here. It is nice and thick and creamy. It looks absolutely beautiful. I'm gonna season that up with a little bit of salt because we didn't add any earlier. I like to add the salt at the end because it makes it so those yolks don't cure. It just seasons them up perfectly and it's looking great. So now we're just gonna spoon all of this delicious hollandaise on top of those three, not four, eggs. <laughs> all right, just put that right on top. This is kind of acting like the gravy of this amazing, beautiful breakfast poutine. Personally, I like serving this just like this in this big dish, something that you can just put on the table, everyone can grab some forks, go in family style. But if you wanna be a little fancier, you could feel free to do this individually. That would be absolutely beautiful. Onto there for a little bit of green. Some chives, classic and beautiful. And then a little pinch of that cayenne pepper, just to give you a hint that there's a little bit of spice in there. Now, we have some very special guests to taste this. So everyone give it up for drag brunch performers and former Canada's Drag Race Queens, Miss Mosu and Aurora Matrix. <laughs> Oh, that Thank was so you. cool. Leave it to the drag queen. Uh, we know what to do. We I know feel what like to you do. deserve a bad bitch. Yes. Would you like? Would you like? Oh, enjoy a little bit of a froze, a watermelon froze. Always delish. Okay, let's give it a taste. Mm. Not bad, right? Oh my God. Right? I feel brand new. I know. I know. She's That's great. giving life and it's so giving good. Giving life in a drink. 100%. <laughs> That's fabulous. So first off, thank you so, so much for being here. It is such an honor to meet you both. I wanted to ask you, what was your experience like on Canada's Drag Race? Oh my gosh. Well, I just got off of my season, yes. so I'm still riding that high, mm -hmm. but I'm getting so many opportunities to meet people around the world, meet people online, yeah. and I'm just very grateful for everything that's come my way so far. Oh, that's absolutely beautiful. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Honestly, it's just so great to get that platform and then to get off the show. You just start to see things a bit differently mm -hmm. and then now my drag brunch at the Drake Hotel every Saturday just has that little extra, oh, she was on Drag Race. A hundred percent. Speaking of the drag brunch, I love it. I Honestly, Pride, it's a, it's a long day. It's a long night. You got to give a good base, in my personal opinion. A hundred percent. So do you guys want to give a taste of this breakfast poutine? Is yes. that what I'm smelling? Is that what you're yes. smelling? <laughs> Listen, there's fried potatoes, there's bacon, there's everything delicious. So you give it a go. Okay. Well, you do that when oh, you keep cheese. drinking. Oh, you gotta have cheese. I want the cheese. Oh, yeah, you gotta get that little. Oh, oh I got Listen, a little. Listen, Aurora's got the really good cheesy bite. All right, we going in? Oh. oh I don't know. You she's going, going in with that. Yeah. <laughs> well, cheers. Did you like it? Not too shabby. That's incredible. Fried potato and cheese. It's always okay. a good thing. Um, oh thank God. you so much for being here. Happy Pride. Cheers. Ooh. Cheers to brunch. Cheers to y'all. Cheers. cheers to brunch. Happy Hey, Mary here. What did you think? Drop your comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe for more of the good stuff.